Uh, and so my next guests will know the panel this morning, lawyer Vernon Tava and media commentator Janet Wilson. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Great to have you Good here. Good morning. Um, Vernon, everyone will know that you're a failed um, Green candidate. <laughs> yes. Uh, and so it's perfect to come to you firstly with the... I mean, the... Hmm? Failed. Yeah. Oh. You know, oh, we'll we're all I think that's a bit harsh. I think that's a bit harsh. I am a bit harsh, though. I finished in the, in the top three. And that yeah, was, uh, and that's true. That was pretty good. He yeah. was one of the three top losers. Um, do you have numbers? Do you know where you finished? It's all how you look at it. Uh, well, I came, I, came, <laughs> I came third equal with uh, Gareth Hughes. In oh, so last, yeah. yeah. Okay. He got a vote um, each. Now, let, well, what we're talking about, of course, is the fact that the Greens voted down, I suppose, you know, our attempt at sophistication with yeah. this Rugby World Cup drinking thing. You cannot defend that. Well, no, I won't try to, um, because I think that, look, I'm, I'm sure that there seem to be good policy grounds, um, but... What? Politics doesn't happen what good in, in the grounds? world of policy. And a lot of the Greens have this fairly touching belief that, that if you just explain the policy, that people will understand. Mm. But that's not how it works. Mm. And um, I think if the attempt was to try to stop David Seymour from getting extra publicity, it completely failed in doing and that. Do you know what? I have to tell you, I think that government. was the attempt. Yeah. I think it was all about politics yeah. and it was trying to slip the rug out from underneath David Seymour. And you're right, it's failed. But yeah. it's just confirmed all those negative stereotypes about mm. the Greens. Um, and if Let's you want to sell... <laughs> Well, if you want to sell a vision of sustainability, um, it's good to be a bit more positive um, and, and not to be wowsers and not to sell this sort of hair Janet, shirt reality. Janet, you can't disagree with that, can you? Well, it, it really is head-scratchingly kind of weird to me that, you know, the Greens' major voters are, what, 18 to 35? Mm. These are the very people who can't afford Sky, which is now running yep. the Rugby World Cup. So where are they going to go? Where are they going to go and watch their favourite game? I mean, it's just real politics tells me that this is a dumb idea. Idea. Yeah, yeah. Really? yeah. Rugby World Cup's pretty untouchable, I think. Mm. Um, and and you know, well, evidently um, to not be to honest, the Greens. Well, you know, uh, I don't think it'll make a big difference. To be frank, you know, so well, we're the looking Greens at standing in the way. Oh no, this well, legislation is going to go well, through. Well, when it goes through, one because way or another, the, the, yeah. the assumption is is that everybody who goes along in the wee hours of the morning is going to get absolutely tanked, and I don't think that's true. I think most people just go um, because it's a social. You know thing. what? Some Even of these places will do be doing. Sky, huh? They'll be putting on breakfasts. They'll yeah. be doing. You know, yeah. they'll be doing yeah. lovely bacon and egg and mash. Yes, mash, yes. and they'll be having little champagne. Of course they will. And that's yep. okay. People champagne are still going to. with your coffee. People are still going to have to go to work. They're not going to get smashed first. No, you're right. You're right. But here's one of the issues I have with it. So leaving the Greens aside, uh, please, let's do that. Um, it is this sort of overall lack of sophistication. I don't think you agree with me on this, Janet. But, no. Um, so I'll turn to you, Vernon. <laughs> um, I think there is a lack of sophistication. I mean, we cannot be trusted to drink, oh, so we well, need to close the establishments down. There's little doubt about it. I mean, we've, we've, we seem to have inherited the kind of English drinking culture of, um, of just binge drinking around sporting events and doing dangerously reckless Or just around stuff. everything. Yeah. Well, we, and we've seen that time and time again. Uh, uh, although when things were managed carefully, as we saw in the uh, in the last Rugby World Cup, it can be okay, mm, you know. Mm. But it does seem that a lot of safety measures need to be put in place because this people a, do a, really drop many, many IQ points when they start drinking, it seems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, th I think we're overly worried about that because this yeah. is a great social occasion, isn't it? I think so. I think, you know, we've got to give ourselves some credit. Are we not sophisticated enough? Can we not trust ourselves? I think we can. I think we should be. I spoke Raising to, um, the bar and having expectations. Raise the bar. Board. That's mm. right. Raising and let's bar. let's legislate for, for, for the top end of society, not the bottom end of society. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, that's I spoke true. to the and Prime Minister this morning. something, people yeah. will live down to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm. Um, treat people like drunken peasants and they will behave like drunken peasants. Um, uh, the Prime Minister this morning seemed to me very sketchy on how many games would be covered by this and the suggestion is it will only be some, certainly not all. Why right. wouldn't we cover them all? Well... <laughs> Really? I mean, if the you're making argument, legislation... The argument would be, I'm sure, that this is when the drinking does start. The argument would be this is when they will go and get boozed, when they go and see a game that they're not particularly interested in, but uh, the bars are open late. Uh, I would have thought. Yeah, yeah I do Wouldn't agree you? with making it the, the major events. So when you're into the, the, the quarters, semi-finals, final. Um, because otherwise you've got an entire season yeah. Um, yeah. of about six weeks. You've got where, people where sitting there with a plate of yeah. bacon and mash and the game's not that interesting. Yeah, Anything well, could I, happen. I just That's don't think right. it's that sensible for do it, for, to do All it for right. that long. But the main event games, yes. OK, it's 24 minutes past eight. More topics with the panel in just a moment. Take me down, take me down 
All righty, welcome back. Great to have you with us. This is Paul Henry on a Wednesday morning. Thanks to our partners AMP, 28 minutes past eight. Uh, the panel are with me now, Vernon Tarver, Janet Wilson. Um, are we talking ourselves into recession? What do you think, Janet? No, I think we're, we're putting our head in the sand and pretending a recession isn't arriving when it actually is coming upon us like a freight train down the line, frankly. God, that's worrying. Yeah, I think we've, if you look at all the business confidence surveys, they've been going down for the last probably four quarters. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the writing is on the wall and we don't want to see it. And of course, we have a government that has to say, nothing to see here, okay, it's moved on. Okay, and so that's what the Prime Minister is saying. But he's not arguing that the, the trends are going down and that unemployment's going to possibly rise a bit. Vernon, what he's saying is, have a look. Even when we go down to the figures they're predicting, it's still pretty good. Yeah, well, it's certainly his job to maintain confidence. And, and you know, when the when the Prime Minister's saying, oh, look, I might just sleep in this morning, it's all looking pretty bad, then we know we've got something yeah. to worry about. Well, you call it grease. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's it's there are a lot of fundamentals um, in the economy, um, particularly our, our heavy dependence on dairy and the way that's headed, that we've been hearing warnings about for years. Um, Auckland's housing market's overheating. We're having problems in Christchurch. Yeah. A lot of these fundamentals we've been hearing about for many years have never really been addressed. In fact, we've doubled down on them, so it does seem inevitable. I suppose you could argue with dairy down. that it's slightly been a, a, a addressed and that we mm. don't rely on it as heavily as we once did. Yep, but that's you true. would still argue we rely mm. on it too heavily. Absolutely. It accounts mm. for 20% of our exports. Mm. I mean, there's no reason. The thing that I, I'm not getting from the, the economists, these bank economists, is that, oh, there's going to be a small blip in dairy, then it's going to go up. Mm. Where's the evidence of that? I'm I'm not seeing the evidence. And I'll yeah, tell well, you I one think thing. History, I think history is the thing, but yeah. the, because, you know, you've got ebbs and flows. Mm. But yeah. The thing that worries me um, is that it will go up, but we've never had the competition that we are, we have at the moment in dairy. You know, China are going to be one of the biggest dairy producers in mm. the world, and up until now, they've been one of the biggest dairy consumers. Mm. That in itself is just a phenomenal. There's a glut too, isn't there? Exactly. And, and our commentary in the media is dominated by bank economists, and they will always play down the volatility in the housing market because that's what the banks do: is lend money for houses. God, you well people are clever. This is the brains well trust. All right, Janet Wilson, Vernon Tarver, thank you both very much for joining us. We will talk to you again soon. It is